Welcome to the full story series right here at Comic Story, and your home for audio dramas of your favorite comic books, video games, and movies. Typically, we bring out multiple videos in a week, all within different story arcs happening with your favorite superheroes, be it Batman, Superman, or Deadpool. And what ends up happening is, as the years and months go on, sometimes it becomes a little difficult to keep up with it if you miss an episode or two. Sure, we keep these in a playlist, but every Monday, we like to grab that playlist and turn it into a giant episode just to make it straightforward and easy for you to enjoy. And today, we're going to be bringing you the second major story arc of the now-canceled Spider-Man man Deadpool comic book. This was something that was slightly out of continuity, but had Spider-Man and Deadpool teaming up for various reasons, and in this particular arc, it's all about Deadpool and the LMDs and the AI. It's crazy, it's all over the place, and I had a lot of fun covering it, and I hope you enjoy this storyline. With the fall of Parker Industries, Peter Parker was forced to give up his life of luxury and was reduced to sleeping on friends' couches. One of which is Mockingbird, Bobby, the ex-Shield agent, who's already sick of Peter sleeping in past 5.30 a.m. As she yells for Peter to get up, he looks at the clock and asks why she got up so early and is already dressed to go out. As she tells him that she got a tip from some AIM jerks trying to make a move on some black market weapons without Shield around, someone's gotta clean these things up. Peter starts to get up telling her that he could join her, and Bobby tells him no, Spider-Man already has a job. Peter Parker doesn't. She knows things are difficult, but he needs to get back on the horse and get out there. Also, don't touch any of her food and don't spend all day watching TV. Once Bobby leaves, Peter sits back down and he turns on the television. After flipping through several news outlets talking about how much of a horrible person Peter Parker is, Peter finds a commercial with Deadpool. Wade tells the viewers that if they're tired of being held back in life by the lack of weapons of mass destruction, then look no further. Come on down and see the finest selection of artillery, implements of mayhem for your bathroom, bedroom, and more. Peter grumbles as he grabs his phone and tries to call Deadpool, and just as he expected, Wade does not answer. As Wade's voicemail beeps, Peter shouts at him, you've gone too far this time. It's bad enough that you're already the most wanted person in the world, but now this? There won't be any stone left unturned until I've brought you in for what you did. I will find you. Oh, and by the way, it's Spider-Man. Peter throws his phone and he tells him that he can find him. All he needs is a computer and then he can go arrest Wade. And after a whole two minutes, Peter grabs the phone and asks Bobby if she could do him a favor. Bobby tells him that she's kind of busy at the moment with the bad guys, but what is it? And he better not be eating her food. He pauses as he pulls a sandwich out of his mouth and Bobby says that he is literally the worst. Who is it that you're trying to find? Peter tells her that it's Deadpool, and Bobby asks, Deadpool? The Deadpool? Most wanted man in the world, Deadpool? Peter tells her, any of those would work. A few seconds later, she pings his phone telling him that he should be there or around there. And Peter tells her that she already found him? And she says, yeah, she can multitask. After suiting up, Peter heads out to the coordinates that Bobby gave him and he webs through the city. He thinks to himself that he knows that Wade was the one who shot Agent Coulson under the orders of the evil Steve Rogers. But somehow he feels that this is partially his fault. Maybe there's a way to help Wade? Maybe he hasn't gone too far? As Peter lands, he sighs, stating, come on, it looks like this is an old shield helicarrier named the USS Pool. He jumps on board and sneaks into that helicarrier, finding Kate Waynesborough and her assistant Hellcow, which totally shouldn't be here. Peter says, all right, mad scientist lab complete with talking cow. It's pretty much just Deadpool written all over it. And then he's face to face with a Hulk plushie and Screwball flies by asking, what are you doing here? Peter tells her that this is perfect. Every circus needs a clown. And Screwball says the last time that they tangled, he was the not so friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Since then, she's gotten a new job and some new upgrades. Her boss is now a totally awesome guy with a killer dental plan. Peter tells her, wait. But as Screwball pushes a button, a trap door opens, causing Spider-Man to fall, but not before webbing up Screwball and taking her with him. The two fall into a room full of Hulk plushies, and Peter says, yeah, this is definitely the house that Deadpool built. As Screwball begins to get up, she charges into Peter, shouting, how did you get past my defenses? Only friendlies are welcome aboard. And a voice calls out, that's right. And Wade springs out of the plushie, stating, that's because Spider-Man is my super most bestest friend. But before Wade can even finish his thought, Peter yells, you're under arrest. And he tackles Wade to the ground. Wade tells him, fight, fight. But first, let me give you the MTV Cribs tour. You need to see my collection of stuffed animals. Peter throws Wade across the room and into the lab of Clay Quartermain, a life model decoy with a living tree living on him. As Clay begins to tell Wade that the rogue shield Beela tanks are about to be picked up, Wade whispers to keep the criminal talk down. 
Peter grabs Wade and he says, look, look, I know what you're really here for. You need a job, right? After getting fired from that loser, Peter Parker, Spider-Man needs some money. Peter yells, you stole a helicarrier. And Wade says, in my defense, I found it in a ditch. Peter then goes on telling him, not only that, but you're selling rogue shield gear on late night TV ads. This whole thing is over. No more jokes, no more stupid rooms, no more. But Wade tells him, wait, wait, wait. I'm not selling shield goods on late night TV ads. All of these weapons are for my personal collection. He then goes to the computer and sends an email to Screwball stating that she needs to look into late night ads starring him. Also, they need to work on the intercom system. He walks up and punches the keyboard and in doing so causes the two of them to fall back into the ocean, where Wade telepathically introduces Bruce and Deborah, the mutated sharks. Peter then asks him, how are you talking to me telepathically? And the Manphibian swims up telling Wade that he's told him countless times, no swimming during training hours. Manphibian then goes on telling him, you freed these sharks in the Black Sight Shield Aquatics Weapons Facility. They are designed to read thoughts and project them into others' minds. Wade begins to swim away after having his leg bitten off, and he says, come on, there are so much cooler toys on the helicarrier. As everyone swims, Bruce says, soon we will consume them. And Deborah says, yes, but first we should go download those new episodes of Stranger Things. Once Wade gets Peter into his bedroom, Wade tells him, this is where all the magic happens, buddy. Peter shakes out the water from his mask, shouting, that is enough. You killed Coulson. You have to go to jail. But since we've worked together, I'll make sure you get help. Wade punches Spider-Man, telling him, I'm always going to be the bad guy. I tried. I really did. But you know what? I'll never be one of the good guys. And what you saw on TV, that was an imposter. Thanks to Screwball's super fast research, I can tell you what's going on with all of this late night crap. Spider-Man ends up falling into a hatch, and Wade then goes on telling him, and for the record, I would never wear a lariat. Wade then jumps down, grabbing onto Peter while pulling a chain and opening the hatch, and yells, and we're gonna stop this imposter. After falling a few hundred feet, Wade tells him it's probably time to web one of those parachutes you got, <laughs> you know, so we don't hit the ground. Spider-Man being able to create a parachute, and once he stabilizes them, he immediately lets go of Wade, letting him fall face first into the ground. As Spider-Man begins to land on what seems like a giant pumpkin, he asks, where are they? And Wade tells him, come on, don't you recognize Tabula Rasa? One of the pumpkin plants tries to eat Spider-Man, and he says, right, Tabula Rasa. What's Tabula Rasa again, Deadpool? Wade then pulls out a cue card and he begins to read. Located in Montana, Tabula Rasa is a once sealed off patch of land that was wiped clean and reborn with the power of the life seed. Blah, blah, blah. It's also a solid episode of Lost, but come on. We're here so that we can have a team up. I know you want to. Come on. Say it, Spider-Man. Team up. After fighting his way out of the plant and falling on the ground, Spider-Man gets up and says, okay, then you go to jail, Wade. Wade tells Spider-Man to keep his eyes on the prize. We're here to stop some bad guys who are probably worse than me. That's when a giant bird-like creature walks by and Wade quickly yells, we come in peace. The creature stomps on the ground trying to crush the two of them and Wade calls back up to the helicarrier asking if anyone can even read him. Which, no, they do not, but what they do see is that Deadpool and Spider-Man need help and everyone on his helicarrier chooses to do nothing. As Spider-Man and Wade run, Peter comes up with an idea, jumping onto the side of the creature, webbing up Wade. He then pulls on the web, choking Wade, creating a tripwire that trips the giant bird creature. Wade begins to pull the webbing off, telling him, See? We have such good chemistry! The creature snorts and uses its trunk and starts to suck Wade back up, and then it tries to grab Spider-Man. As Spider-Man dodges, Wade yells, Come on! Don't let me die in some monster sack! As the creature ends up grabbing Spider-Man and slamming him to the ground with his trunk, Spider-Man gets back up, holding the trunk, flipping the creature over, slamming it down onto its back, and he pokes the sack, asking Wade, Hey, are you still alive in there? Wade says it smells kind of like a sarlacc and shame in here, which, BT dubs, is totally fine with me. And a voice calls out to Spider-Man standing, good work for stopping Deadpool, Spider-Man. Spider-Man looks back as he's Husk riding one of the bird creatures asking what she's doing here. She tells him that she was moonlighting for S.H.I.E.L.D. here in their non-human resources department before it all went to hell. But after all the good work that they did, she couldn't just leave these fine feathered creatures in the lurch. The one who's got Deadpool in his neck sack? That one's Jerry. This place got worse after Deadpool showed up. So we should probably let Jerry's acid slowly kill him. Peter says, yeah. Whatever Deadpool you saw, that wasn't Deadpool. The one dying in the sack, that's the real one. And Husk asks, so the one that we ran into was an imposter? Fine. Let him go, Jerry. Jerry snorts, shooting Wade out, and Wade shouts, BEST DAY SPA EVER! Spider-Man then goes on stating that Fake Pool has been selling stolen shield weapons and guesses that he probably is headed towards the central lab in this location. Husk tells him that they can work together to stop Fake Pool, so follow her. Wade yells, uh, can we please get a ride on those creatures? And a few moments later, Wade screams, hi ho creature thing, away! As the three ride off, Husk asks Spider-Man why he's working with Deadpool anyway. And Spider-Man tells her that he's not. He was kidnapped after going hunting for him. And after this, Wade shouts, I'm going to jail. Everyone heard it the first five times you said it, Spider-Man. Can we go and punch stuff now? 
Just then, there's an explosion at the bird creature's feet, throwing everyone to the ground, and another voice shouts, Good morning, campers! The fake Deadpool steps up and asks, Can you believe that she left behind some highly impressionable creatures? They seem so happy to be let out. Wade gets up stating that he can walk the walk, not so much talk to talk. Let's see if you can fight the fight. Husk sheds her skin, turning it into a hard rock-like substance, and then jumps up, punching one of Fake Pool's monsters to the ground. Wade gets up, walking up to Fake Pool, pulling his mask to reveal himself. Fake Pool tells him, the truth hurts, doesn't it? Raid reaches up, ripping off that mask, revealing Dum Dum Dugan. And Dugan says, that's right, dum-dum. Dugan punches Wade to the ground, telling him, I only need a few pieces of you for the next part, so do me a favor and hold still. Wade jumps up and says, I got something for this, and he reaches down into the front of his pants. He pulls his hand back out and has a small nightcrawler imp there, and then he bamps them away. Spider-Man shouts, really? And Husk says, perhaps Deadpool is beyond help. And Spider-Man says, I'm starting to see that. Back over the helicarrier, Wade bamps to Screwball and asks if they found the secret stash down there yet. Screwball says that the comms aren't working down there, but scans are showing that there's a vault at the edge of the forest. Wade then asks if anybody has seen his cowboy hat. He's gonna need it for a thing. Back on the ground, Peter and Husk lead Dugan and the monsters to some water. And Dugan then asks, are you all ready to die yet? Husk then says that she's had enough of this and jumps up knocking Dugan off of his monster and begins punching him into the ground. Just then another mask flies off and Fake Pool stands up as Captain America. And he says, yeah. I'm still bad. Suddenly, everyone hears singing, and Wade bamps one of the sharks from before on top of the monsters, letting it bite down onto its heading. Wade lands, and he looks back at Peter and Husk, asking, What? You thought I'd leave you? Just then, Wade is shocked, and the electricity shoots through the water, shocking everyone. Fake Pool gets up telling them, No more games or jokes, and no more masks. It's time for Chameleon to show his true face. Later, as Spider-Man begins to slowly open up his eyes, he sees himself upside down, and he tells Wade, this is all your fault. Wade asks, how is it my fault? Chameleon's not a part of my rogues gallery. This is on you. And Husk then asks, can you both shut up and try to figure out a way to get out of this? Because those things down there don't look friendly. Wade looks down and sees three of Chameleon's monsters and says, oh, maybe it's time for us to leave. He then calls out that he's got this. He just needs to get his knife out of his pocket. And as Wade reaches for it, he doesn't feel anything, like anything at all. And then he asks if anyone's seen his right hand by any chance. Meanwhile, over at the secret vault, Chameleon slaps Wade's severed hand onto the hand reader, and the computer announces handprint identified, Avengers override activated. Chameleon tosses the hand aside, stating, that's better. Now let's check out all these weapons. Back at the pit, one of the monsters jumps trying to grab Wade, and he asks, who steals a hand? Like who really would do that? Peter tells him it's probably to open up whatever secret vault he came for, and Wade tells him, How dare you assume we came here for fake pool? Also at this time, Husk begins shedding her stone skin and climbs up out of the ropes, grabbing one of Wade's guns and begins to fire down on the monsters. Wade says, Don't worry, I got this. See those two shark fins in the sky? Watch this. Seconds later, Bruce and Deborah fall out of the sky, chopping down on the monsters. And while Husk finishes untying the other two, branches reach down, grabbing everyone, lifting them up to the ledge. Spider Man then stares at Clay and asks, What are you? And Clay tells him, a life model decoy of Clay Quartermain that was infected with a sentient organic virus, to which the branches say, hello. Peter then sees an apple hanging from one of the limbs, and he asks if they can eat that. Branch then says that those are the fruit of his bowels. And Wade, while currently eating one, mentions that they're delicious! Once everyone is ready, they head over to the vault, and the first thing that Wade sees is a giant missile. And he says that these look wonderful! And Peter tells him, don't even think about it. And Branch says he is thinking about it. And then Wade tells Branch, that's not cool. Silence is golden. Screwball runs over to one of the computers and begins going through the files, and then mentions that according to this, Chameleon was looking for something called... But before she could finish, there's a loud boom as the desk is destroyed, and Chameleon stands up through the smoke with a rather large gun. He tells Wade, thanks for the help. You're real handy. And Wade yells back, wow, I was pretty mad about the whole hand thing, but I got to admit, that was a pretty solid wordplay. Chameleon then fires the gun at Hellcow, and Husk jumps in the way with her stone skin to block the attack. Just as Chameleon goes to fire again, Spider-Man shoots some webbing down on the barrel of the gun, causing it to explode when Chameleon pulls the trigger. Chameleon gets back up, hitting the button, telling him, okay, let's see how you handle some of Shield's robots. While Screwball handles the robots, Peter and Wade begin fighting Chameleon directly, punching and beating into him. Chameleon pulls out his gun, whipping it at Spider-Man, firing it, and as Spider-Man jumps, the shot hits a tank that Clay is standing next to. The chemicals from the tank begin to pour onto Clay, and he shouts that whatever was in there is making it so that he can't control Branch. The virus is losing control. The virus then begins to grow and spread, and as the vines grab onto everyone, Peter tells Wade, you are the best, huh? And Wade yells back, I found him on Craigslist. Chameleon fires through the vines to escape, and while everyone else begins to get back up, Wade tells Spider-Man and Husk to go on ahead. He's gonna handle this. As Spider-Man and Husk run on ahead, Spider-Man calls back that they're going to find Chameleon. 
and Husk asks, do we really have to? Up ahead, Chameleon jumps onto Husk's shield rocket car and begins to take off, but Spider-Man webs it up at the last second and pulls himself up. He then lands on the hood, telling Chameleon that that was pretty rude of him for leaving without saying goodbye. Chameleon tells him, don't worry, we're gonna see each other again, and when we do, I'm not just going to kill you. There's gonna be something else more fun in mind. After pressing a button on the steering wheel, an electrical charge shoots out, hitting Spider-Man, causing him to lose balance and fall off. He falls back to the ground where Husk catches him with one of the bird creatures, and she asks, do we really have to go back for Deadpool? And Spider-Man tells her, yeah. When they get back to the vault, they find it completely emptied out. Wade and his team are also not there. Just then, the lights are turned off, and Husk tells Spider-Man that she really hates him. Spider-Man tells her that he's been getting that a lot recently. Back up on the stolen shield helicarrier, the USS Pool, Wade laughs eating one of Branch's apples, stating, Can't control Branch! Classic! Deadpool then high-fives everyone, stating that they did their parts well. Just look at our hall! Screwball tells Wade that it seemed like Chameleon did get away with something. A file that contained something. Wade laughs out loud again, asking, Paper? He stole paper? What an idiot. Rocks beat paper, and more importantly, WMDs beat paper. Come on, let's just go see who's gonna buy these toys at the highest price. Daddy needs the new stuffed animals. However, over in Chameleon's secret hideout, he begins to pull out the file with the words, Project Doppelganger written on them. And he says, Now, the real fun begins. In the snowy suburbs of the Rolling Hills, Deadpool walks with Clay down the street to their next target location, and Deadpool asks, is this the right place? Clay tells him that they must maintain radio silence. There may be telepathic creatures in the area. Deadpool whispers that it just means that he can think even driftier thoughts. And by the way, this hologram disguise is super itchy. The two walk into a door and Deadpool looks back and he says that he doesn't want to alarm anyone, but are we being followed? As Deadpool and Clay look back, one of the kids following them says, you can't hurt me anymore. You won't hurt anyone anymore. Deadpool then rings the doorbell to the house, stating, oh, they seem nice and creepy. And Clay tells him, maybe Kate was right. This might be a death trap. Whatever these things are, they're not on the Area 14 manifest. Hopefully they will be open for negotiations instead of outright murder. Just then the front door to the house opens and a couple inside yells, Howdy neighbors! And as the man continues, his speech turns robotic and she begins to ask, How may we be of, 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 of? The man falls over and the woman then says, Please forgive my husband. He's one man too, Matt, Matt, Matt. Deadpool and Clay quickly walk inside and Deadpool slams the door shut and Clay says, They look like LMDs, former S.H.I.E.L.D. agents like myself. Deadpool then says, if it's robots, I can handle robots. And Clay looks outside telling him, well, the things outside are now robots. Deadpool looks at the window and yells, oh, so many tentacles. Clay then tells Deadpool, you can head to the lower levels. Me and Branch will stay up here and make sure that nothing gets inside. As Deadpool hurries down, within seconds, he's already blasting his way through the robot guards watching over the facility. And just as he gets in, Spider-Man appears and calls out, that's enough. It's time for you to go to jail. I can't believe you would actually ditch me in Tabula Rasa. And Deadpool then asks him, are you sure about that? Because that would totally be a thing I would do. Spider-Man punches him yelling, you ditched me after you stole every weapon in the place. And Deadpool begins to fight back, telling him, technically not everything. Chameleon stole some paper. Like, come on, who steals paper? As the two go back and forth, Deadpool knocks Spider-Man towards Vault 22. And Deadpool stops and says, I remember someone saying something about Vault 22. He then thinks back to just before the operation. And while Clay was going over the contents of each vault, Hellcow told Deadpool specifically not to go near Vault 22. Spider-Man begins to pick himself back up, asking, what did you remember? And just then, white and black tentacles break free from Vault 22, grabbing both Spider-Man and Deadpool. Deadpool then says, well, don't feel bad, Webs. We had a pretty good run. 27 issues is actually really good in the market, to be honest. The tentacles then lift the two of them up and slam them to the ground, knocking their heads through the floor and into the room below. As the two of them look around, the room starts arming itself with machine guns, rockets, flails, and Deadpool tells them, you know, I really don't want to jump to any conclusions here, but between those enslaved droids upstairs in this Fifty Shades of Grey training room, I'm starting to think S.H.I.E.L.D. might actually be bad. The tentacles then whip back up and Deadpool yells, and if that's the case, then it's good news, because that means I'm actually not stealing anything. I'm setting things free. Spider-Man tells him, you're not being a hero here. You're still a criminal, and you're always going to be one. And apparently, that's how you're going to die. Deadpool stops to think about it and says, you know what? You're right. He pulls out one of his katanas and he starts to carve through the tentacles, telling him, I am a criminal, a murderer, a monster, but I thought I could be better. Maybe I could be a hero like the person I look up to. Spider-Man. However, I was wrong. It doesn't matter what everyone thinks about me or who I let down, except Spider-Man. And for that, I'm sorry. Spider-Man gets up throwing a chopped tentacle off at him, and he says, If you really mean that, then prove it. Turn yourself in. Walk away. Deadpool reaches into his pocket, pulling out a small device, and then he looks back at Spider-Man and he tells him, I'm sorry. And as soon as Deadpool pushes the button, all of the vault doors light up, teleporting their contents along with Deadpool back to his helicarrier. 
A short while later, while everyone looks over the hall, Screwball says that this stuff is great. She's already got some buyers lined up. Where should they go next? But instead of answering, Deadpool hangs his head and he walks away. Back down in Area 14, Spider-Man looks at the empty Vault 22 and he says, Now that the monster is out of the way, let's see what's behind the locked door. He heads into the back and he begins to push buttons on a control panel and after entering a code, a small compartment opens up. He then reaches in pulling out a small green device and he leaves and back outside, Spider-Man walks up to the children that were guarding the house and tells them, Thanks for letting me in. One of the children then says, Hey, you kept your promise. You got rid of the bad things. Spider-Man then pulls off his mask, handing it to the child, and he walks off. But the man under the mask isn't Spider-Man, it's actually Chameleon. Elsewhere, Spider-Man, the real Spider-Man, tells Husk that he came over as soon as he could. What did she find out about Chameleon? And Husk says, well, it turns out Chameleon stole something called Project Doppelganger. The facility they're in now used to house thousands of robots, which were just stolen by Chameleon. And Husk says, actually, yes, the robots may be stolen, but they can't be powered up unless the user has this. And Husk opens up her file, and it's a picture of the same device that Chameleon just stole from Area 14. Later that night at Mockingbird's apartment, Spider-Man slurps his slushy, and Mockingbird and Husk stare, asking, How did he get away again? Spider-Man says that he already told them. Chameleon! But Husk stops him, stating, No, Deadpool, how did he get away? And Spider-Man just sits there and takes a, another sip of his slushy. Then he yells, Fine! Well, it all started off like any other day. Typical hero stuff, saving a school bus full of kids and them telling me how cool I was. Husk asks him, did that really happen? And Mockingbird says, of course not. Now get back to the actual story. But it was like Spider-Man said, he was out on patrol when he spotted Kraven terrorizing people on the streets. As a fight between Spider-Man and Kraven began, Spider-Man quickly began to notice the ground starting to shake. Seconds later, Deadpool and Chameleon burst out of it right beneath him, both fighting over another shield facility. Spider-Man looks over, stating, oh look! Chameleon, Craven, and now Deadpool and his gang are stealing off in the same place. Shocker! Deadpool yells, Shocker's here too? But before the banter could continue, Chameleon, using tendrils, grabs the two of them, slamming them into the ground. As Deadpool starts shooting, he tells Spider-Man, We really gotta quit meeting up like this. People are gonna start suspecting things, buddy. Spider-Man then asks, What are you even talking about? And Deadpool tells him, Look, about what I said last time, I really meant it. Then Spider-Man shouts, Seriously, what are you talking about? Last time I saw you was back in Tabula Rasa. Husk and me were stuck there for 36 hours. We had to eat bugs. Bugs, Deadpool! Chameleon then says, I must admit, it was an amazing performance, but now there are places to go and people to be. He then turns and shoots into a building, causing the debris to chip off and fall straight towards a group of civilians. Spider-Man quickly jumps up, creating a web net to catch the falling rocks, and then he looks over at Deadpool, telling him, So the last time that we saw each other, it would appear that you got played. So what was it that you apparently told Chameleon, who looked like me, that was so important? Deadpool sighs and he tells him, The truth. And then he leaves with his group with the stolen weapons. Back in the current time, Mockingbird asks, Why didn't you go after Deadpool? Spider-Man says, you know, the building. People in danger, that was a thing. And Mockingbird sighs, stating that Deadpool and his crew stole everything. Those weapons are already on the black market. There's too much at stake now. We need backup. The next time that you come across Deadpool, and Spider-Man tells her, I know, I know, he goes down for good. Meanwhile, over at the SS Deadpool, everyone stares at Deadpool, and Deadpool asks, what? I already told you, Chameleon. And Manphibian says, no, not Chameleon. Spider-Man, how did he find us again? Clay asks Branch if he's able to read Deadpool's mind, and Branch says that he can't at the moment. Deadpool's mind is closed off, but there is something off about him. Hell Cow calls out, None of us are going to jail. We work for Deadpool, the world's greatest assassin. Next time Spider-Man gets in our way, Deadpool tells them, I know, I know, I'm gonna kill him. A short while later, as Chameleon returns to his hideaway, Craven begins to help him with his robe, and Chameleon's phone begins to ring. He answers it, stating that they have his thanks for leading the horse to the water. Someone in the shadows aboard SS Deadpool says that they will do whatever they want. But they've got to be careful going forward. Deadpool is getting suspicious. Chameleon then tells the person that they will proceed with caution, but keep him posted on where Deadpool is heading next. As he hangs up, he and Craven walk over to a room full of life model decoys, all copies of superheroes, and says that these are the perfect imitation. This is the true value of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Project Doppelganger. Even a fake Craven will fetch a hefty bounty. Just imagine how much people would pay for these. The next day, people wait in line at the bank when they start to see a shadow looming over them. The people move out of the way and the teller asks, how can she help? But Hulk shouts, Hulk withdraw! And then he kicks open the vault. Hulk along with several other 
hero. LMDs are displayed on a screen and Chameleon tells the people that he is broadcasting to their looks and how they sound like the real thing. The most important part is that they have the powers near equivalent to the heroes themselves. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity and it's going to be expensive. Back over at the bank, Spider-Man swings down as Hulk walks out carrying a sack full of cash. And he says, don't take this the wrong way, but aren't you supposed to be dead? Hulk then swings at Spider-Man and Spider-Man radios over to Mockingbird asking if she's busy. She tells him, yeah, she is. The life model decoys are over here as well. And he's gonna have to manage by himself for a bit. Spider-Man steps back and tells the Hulk, word on the street is that you're not the real Hulk. Hulk then holds out his hand and says, Hulk, and Hulk smashes. He claps his hands together, sending a shockwave into Spider-Man that sends him crashing into the wall. He then charges in after him, and as he pulls his arm back, a webbing hits it, throwing him off balance. And Spider-Man asks, how did I even do that? And the voice tells him that he didn't. Silk jumps in, kicking the Hulk, finishing off, stating, it was me. Spider-Man gets up asking, what is she doing here? And Silk says that she's here to clean up the mess by her former employer's absence. This is starting to look a lot more like a Spider-Man mess than a shield mess, to be honest. Spider-Man yells that this is a chameleon mess, and Silk says that Mockingbird said that it was a Deadpool mess. And Hulk shouts, no more talking! And Spider-Man tells him that's a good idea, as both Spider-Man and Silk begin to web him down. Silk radios over to Mockingbird asking how she's doing, and Mockingbird tells her that she's fine, even though she's not really. And Husk will give them directions on where to go. Husk then says that she hopes that they like road trips, because the signal is bouncing all over town, but as Spider-Man and Silk follow the trail to the other side of town, Deadpool and his gang are also following the same signal. As Spider-Man lands on a rooftop, he asks what they're doing here, and Deadpool yells, Spider-Man? Clay whispers to Deadpool that this would be a good time to do that thing that he promised that he would do, and Deadpool tells him, don't ruin the mood with murder. Spider-Man yells, wait, what? And Deadpool says, before we begin our fisticuffs, we need to talk about something real quick. Deadpool leans over to Silk and takes her hand and says, you know, we've never met before. You're Silk, right? Didn't your book get canceled? And then she punches him, stating, cancel this! And Deadpool says, don't blame me, I bought every single issue! Hashtag Silk Squad for life! As the sharks, Deborah and Bruce, lunge at Spider-Man, Spider-Man tells Deadpool that he's got sharks and didn't attach lasers to them? Missed opportunity there, buddy. Deadpool asks, really? Guess we need to show you the light show. Show. Deborah and Bruce then pull out laser guns and they begin to fire at Spider-Man and Deborah says that she can't believe that they are missing the golden age of television for this trash. As Spider-Man jumps away, Bruce continues his lunge, biting down onto Deadpool. And then Deadpool yells, Sons of Biscuits and Gravy! I know I'm delicious, but everyone really needs to stop biting me. Bruce then continues to carry Deadpool to Spider-Man and as Deadpool gets ready for a quip, Spider-Man punches him out of Bruce's mouth. Back with Mockingbird, the LMDs are beginning to close in on her when suddenly all of them begin to bamf out. Mockingbird begins to yell, What's going on? and Husk tells her that the signal just disappeared. Over on the roof, Deadpool starts to get up, and he says, okay, we both want the same thing. Spider-Man tells him, if it's you arrested, then yes, no more games. Plus, I'd rather not get murdered today. So Clay then asks, that was the plan, right? And Deadpool says, yeah, it was, but first things first. We beat the ever-living crap out of Chameleon. He pulls out his rocket launcher, and he fires a hole into the roof. And once everyone gets down, Deadpool looks around and asks, is it just me, or is Chameleon's penthouse suspiciously empty? Meanwhile, at another hideout, Chameleon's Nightcrawler bamps in the last of the LMDs, laughing, stating that he might just keep this Nightcrawler to himself. But it's like, I'm forgetting something. Oh yes. He pushes down on the detonator in his hand, causing the penthouse where everyone is at right now to explode. In the far future, an old man awakes from a bad dream, and he begins to wonder what has his life become. He's an old man bound to a wheelchair who takes pictures of falling leaves. And as he turns on his light, he smiles, remembering the good old days. The days when he used to be Spider-Man. As time comes, Peter gets dressed and he heads out into the retirement home cafe. However, as he pushes himself along, he starts to overhear some of the other tenants talking about how things of theirs seem to be missing. First a necklace, then a pair of glasses. All gone, without a trace. Peter grabs his food and he takes a seat at one of the tables and he begins doing what he does best, taking pictures. Everything in this retirement home is good, except one thing. It's also the home of the old, the promiscuous, Wade Wilson. Wade puts his foot up on Peter's table, telling him, you know, these pills the doctors got me make me feel like an N64 all over again. Peter sighs, stating he really doesn't want to hear it. And Wade says, fine, fine. I didn't come over here to talk about my letter to Penthouse anyway. I came about this. Wade holds up a tablet with a news article and Peter asks, Are these even real? Just let the Avengers deal with it or something. 
Wade slams the tablet down yelling, they're all dead and you know it. This is our chance. I've been tracking him for years. This is fate. He cut you in half, remember? Peter looks at his camera stating that he's retired now. Let the kids handle this. It's not their time anymore. And Wade scratches his head telling him, fine, how about this? How about we look into the missing items? Last night, I saw someone sneaking around the home in a ski mask. And Peter asks, what are you even talking about? And Wade walks off telling him, you really are in your own little world. It's probably nothing anyway. See you at bingo, kid. Later that night, Peter heads to his room and he gets ready for bed. And as he lays down, he takes off his shirt, revealing the giant scar across his back. The days begin to pass and everything seems normal for Peter. But one of the nights that he was developing his film, he spots something. The burglar Wade mentioned. So he rolls up to his window with his camera. And sure enough, he spots the same burglar creeping out of one of the windows. Peter looks back at all the news clippings of him as Spider-Man and then he sets out to Wade's room. As he gets ready to knock on the door, he pauses for a second and he begins to hear Wade inside with another woman and decides that he'll come back later. Just as Peter gets ready to leave, a dark shadow runs past him and Peter quickly gets into position. Up ahead, the burglar begins to look for a way out and as he steps into another hall, Peter, who is still in his wheelchair on the wall, says, those shoes really don't match his mask. He then springs off the wall, elbowing the burglar in the face. And when he gets back up, the burglar punches Peter's teeth out, knocking him away. He gets up, launching himself with his arm, spinning around, knocking the burglar with his wheelchair. After jumping on the burglar and headbutting him, Wade reaches down, grabbing Peter's teeth, stating, See? Doesn't that feel good? Peter snatches his teeth back from Wade, and Wade pulls the mask off of the burglar and says, It's the janitor. This is some Scooby-Doo stuff right here. One security guard comes by to grab the janitor and Wade rolls Peter away telling him, admit it, it felt good to get that guy again, right? Peter looks at his hands and he tells him, it felt, it felt amazing. As Wade takes Peter back to his room, Peter looks at all the hero and villain tech and asks, did you really keep all this stuff? And Wade says, yeah, but that's not important. What's important is that we have a chance to take out that turd burglar again. Wade holds up another tablet with the same thing as before, but this time Peter smiles and tells him, yeah, we should get the heck out of here. As Peter and Wade begin to sneak out, Wade parks Peter off in the shadows, telling him to wait right here. He needs to grab his meds before they can leave. A short while later, Wade walks into a room with a beat-up janitor and security officers telling them, Academy Award-winning performance, guys. The janitor yells that the guy broke his face and ribs. And Wade says, I'm sorry, but now you're a millionaire, so who cares about a few broken bones? The janitor asks, just who the hell is that old guy anyway? And Wade tells him, that amigo was the amazing, spectacular, friendly, neighborhood Spider-Man. Flash forward a few minutes later, and as Wade hangs onto Peter while he webs the city, Peter asks who he was talking to, and Wade tells him, the reader, genius! Now what do you say we go off and kill Deadpool? But before we can continue this story, let's flash back to a time to learn why Wade is so focused on killing himself. Yeah, let's go with that. It was just after a fight when Peter had been slashed in the back by what he thought was Wade. Wade told him to hang on so that he can get help, and Peter said it's okay. He knows it wasn't the real him. Wade says that someone must have cloned him, and when he finds out who, but Peter told him it's okay. Let him say one last joke thought. Wade begins to pull the mask off of Peter, and Peter asks, What's the superhero's favorite part of a joke? The punchline. As much as Wade holds back, he can't help but let out a chuckle. And soon both him and Peter are laughing. And as they do, Peter's laugh fades and Wade is left knowing that his one and only true friend has died. Now back to our originally scheduled story. Wade wakes up on the rooftop screaming at her dream that he had about Peter's death and he begins to hear Peter waking up next to him. Before Peter wakes up though, Wade takes out the needle that was connecting the two of them together. And he tells Peter to just get some rest, he's gonna need it. A few moments later, Peter wakes up and asks what did he miss? And Wade finishes cooking breakfast telling him, nothing, no sign of jerk faux pool. How was your sleep? Peter rubs his arm telling him that his arm feels kind of funny like something bit him. The two begin to eat breakfast with Wade stating, well, I didn't bite you. No matter how many times you ask, I ain't crossing that line. As Peter eats, he asks, why would his clone come after them after all this time anyway? Why now? And Wade tells him, I'm not sure. I'm just grateful at my chance for revenge. Once breakfast is over, the two heroes go to search for faux pool. And as the night comes, Wade looks into the sky and says that he thinks that he found them. But he can't believe that he's still using the old shield helicarrier that he totally did not steal. Just that a large container shoots down onto the ground and faux pool steps out stating, hey there, golden girls, visiting your future final resting place. Wade grabs his katanas and he lunges at Faux Pool, yelling, How dare you take the Golden Girl's names in vain for B. Arthur! As Wade gets close, Faux Pool knocks Wade away, telling him that he looks suspiciously old these days. Isn't that weird? You have a healing factor, and now you look like a rotting potato. 
Peter jumps in, hitting Faux Pool with his wheelchair, stating that he's going to be looking so much worse. You carbon copy. And Faux Pool asks, Copy? Is Wade still selling you on the whole clone thing? Clones are a Spider-Man thing, not a Deadpool thing. Wade then jumps on Faux Pool from behind, cutting into his back, and Faux Pool shouts in pain, yelling, All right, enough foreplay, you old farts. I have no beef with Spider-Man. Or are you mad that I almost cut you in half? I can still finish the job, you know. Wade asks, do I really talk that much? I'm really starting to see why people find me annoying. Faupool then asks if Wade made him. Does that make Wade his dad or God? And Peter asks him, made him? Faupool jumps through, separating the two of them. And as Faupool slams Wade's head into the wall, he says, yeah, Wade brought me to life the moment that he touched the consult back at Tabula Rasa. Wade punches Faupool off and Peter webs up his head. And Faupool asks, he didn't want his bestie to know the truth, huh? Peter then flings Faupool to the ground, asking, what is he talking about? And Faupool tells him, I'm talking about the fact that Wade here knew what I really was the whole time and that he's responsible for me even being a thing. He's been trying to kill me before you could ever discover the truth. Faupool kicks Peter back, continuing to state that Wade knew that he would come out of hiding the second that he turned that device on that's been tucked away. Faupool then brings out his sword and Wade jumps in, stabbing him in the back and then he punches him off, asking, do you really think you could stop me, old fart? Faupool then jumps on Wade and Wade yells to Peter to take the device out of the bag. Peter reaches in, pulling out a small green device and then Faupool asks, did you really think that I was sitting around waiting? I was building. Peter flips the switch on the device and it stabs into Faupool and suddenly Faupool begins to become electrified. As the electricity burns him, it begins to show that Faupool is in fact a robot. And Peter says, wait, he was a robot? And Wade tells him the politically correct term would be life model decoy. It's the things that Chameleon unleashed all those years ago and he's right, this is all my fault. Before Wade could go on though, Faupool begins to laugh, telling him, I've been looking for that device for decades. Who would have thought that you would have just brought it to me? You may have thought that that device was my kill switch, but it's actually my on switch. And just as he says that, a swarm of fake life model decoy Deadpools jump out of the helicarrier descending upon them. As soon as all of these faux pools land, Peter and Wade begin to escape, and Wade begins to shout, I know a place that we can go. And as soon as they turn outside of an alley, another group appears, and Peter says that he has an idea. He webs up one of Wade's katanas, and he swings it, cutting through a large group of the fake Deadpools. While Peter does his thing, Wade says, you know, I'm filled with mixed emotions right now. On one hand, I've always wanted to see Spider-Man go on a murderous rampage. That's what most of my fanfics are about, to be honest. But on the other hand, you're slicing and dicing copies of me, which is actually some other fanfic I was writing. Peter tells him that he's supposed to be helping, and Wade tells him, Right! Follow me, Spider-Murder Man! After a bit of running, Peter looks around and he asks, Why are we in Central Park? This isn't helpful at all! And Wade says, Come on! Where is it? Oh! Up this giant rock! And Wade begins to knock on the rock with Peter frowning, telling him, We're about to die here, and I hate to slash blame you for this! But ignoring Peter's statement, Wade asks, Little help, big guy? and suddenly the rock begins to rumble before lifting itself off of the ground. The giant rock creature begins to stand up, and Peter asks, Is that Ben Grimm? Wade tells him, No, it's Ben's son, Reed. The details don't matter right now, but we got other things to worry about. Reed begins to lift his arm, and Peter then asks, Does he want a high five or something? And Wade says, Wait for it. Reed then slams his arm onto the ground, shouting, It's clobbering time. And just then, the rest of the new Fantastic Four appear. The old female in the blue Valeria asks, You rang? Oh, life model decoy Deadpool's perfect. Wade jumps down, and another one in the group, Venom Vision, shouts, 1000101100. Wade then says, That's a weird catchphrase. And Valeria tells Wade that he asked him a question. He might want to answer before they leave him to himself. Peter then jumps down, helping the fourth member, the Last Devil, and asks, Who are you supposed to be? And the last devil doesn't answer him, and Peter says, All right, just like Daredevil, good talk. Fopu then knocks the last devil away, singing, Spider Man, Spider Man does whatever Deadpool's mutant blood allows him to do. Ah. Not as catchy. Peter then webs his mouth, telling him, No more singing! And Faupool rips it off, telling him, The next song is about how I cut Spider-Man in two and he died! Peter then grabs Faupool and headbutts him, telling him, No! The Fantastic Four stitched me up! And Faupool stumbles back, telling him, Except they didn't! Wayne Wilson brought you back to life using his muty blood. It's been haunting him for years. That's why he was gunning for revenge. See how gullible you could be when it comes to your best friend? Faupool then kicks, and Peter catches it, telling him, You're insane! And Faupool tells him, I am Wade Wilson, so duh! Peter then webs up the other Faupools, swinging them into the original, but as the original gets back up, he grabs his katana, jumping behind Peter. Faupool then says, All right, it's time to end this! And he slashes through, cutting him in the back again. Wade hears his scream, and like a madman, he begins to carve his way over to Peter. Faupool tells him that Spider-Man goes down again! 
And once again, it's all your fault, Wade. Valeria then picks Peter up, telling everyone that they need to retreat. Reed? Everyone begins to climb up onto Reed's hand, and as Wade tries to attack Fopool, Fopool says, That's the spirit, don't listen to her. You can't change destiny. Reed shouts in pain as Valeria calls out to him, and a group of faux pools begin to stab into him to climb up him. Wade grabs onto the faux pools, climbing up to help himself up, and Reed tells him to just get in his hand. Reed then pulls his arm back, and he throws Wade and the others out of the park, and he asks, I wonder what robots taste like. As the group crashes into the Baxter building, a medical drone rushes over to Peter and begins to scan him. Wade rushes over, and Peter asks, Why did you do it? And as Wade takes off his mask, he says, It's because I couldn't lose my best friend. Peter tells him, it's okay, I forgive you. That's what best friends do. Now be a friend to me, a best friend, and forgive yourself. As Peter slowly begins to stop breathing, Wade shouts, no, not like this. Someone take my blood, all of it, bring them back. And Valeria asks, what are we supposed to do now? There's billions of LMDs. How are we going to shut them all down? And Wade pulls on his mask, stating, you can't, not now, N now. Wait, he runs off into the old storage room, stating, this is all my fault. I could fix this, I could change things. He pulls on a tarp and Valeria tells him, wait, you can't use Doom's time platform. It doesn't work properly, it's cursed. And Wade starts turning the machine on, telling him, yeah, so am I. Meanwhile, in the present day, Spider-Man and Wade Wilson are back to back, surrounded by a group of LMDs, with Spider-Man telling him, we had a good run. And Wade tells him, yeah, 31 issues. I was kinda hoping we get to 50, but hey, 31's a really good number in this market. Wait, did we suddenly jump an issue? Just before the LMDs converge, there's a bright light, and old man Wade steps out shouting, I'm back! And young Peter asks, what the? But old man Wade tells him, you're out of pages, webs! Cue the to be continued. As Master Matrix jumps into the air, saving Spider-Man from being hit by Mysterio, he excitedly yells, I will save my two fathers. Spider-Man kicks Doc Ock's LMD, stating, we are not your dads. And Deadpool tells Matrix, don't listen to Spider Daddy, kiddo. As Deadpool shoots another LMD, he stops and says, actually, we're a family now. And family doesn't keep secrets from each other, which means that I can share with you Webb's real name. Matrix punches Vulture, stating, no, Spider-Man requested his identity remain a secret. Deadpool groans, no fair, fine. Don't tell Spider-Man about the Sasquatch-inspired costume that I found at his place. And definitely do not tell him about the fan art that's been made. Especially the ones set in medieval times. Those are for Patreon followers only. Spider-Man, who can clearly hear Deadpool, says, Okay, I'm shutting this down quick. We can't risk raising a killer robot that our future selves had to come back and patch up. Deadpool tries to explain his point, though. But while the two begin to bicker, Master Matrix finds himself surrounded by some of the LMDs. He releases a blast ripping through them. And then Spider-Man and Deadpool look back with a Deadpool shouting, THAT'S MY KID! The next morning at a former S.H.I.E.L.D. safe house, Spider-Man sits at a table with Mockingbird stating, All right, I, I can explain, Bobby. After a few awkward minutes, Spider-Man says, Okay, um, I can't explain, Bobby. Mockingbird opens up a briefcase stating that she understands that they want to do good and save that machine, but like most things in his life, he's wrong about this. They all know what the machine is capable of doing. That's why this device was made. It's a kill switch that will shut down Matrix permanently. Spider-Man leans over to take it, and then he stops, telling her, I can't. I won't. My parents found Matrix and helped bring him into existence. He is family. Mockingbird sighs, telling him, fine. Keep the switch, though. If you're gonna try and have Matrix do good, you can start by keeping Matrix locked up here. There are spikes in magical energy popping up all over the city, and we can't pinpoint what the spikes are, but every time that there is one, there's a robbery shortly afterwards. Doctor Strange isn't picking up his phone, and I need to go back up the others in Detroit, so it's up to you to figure this thing out, Spider-Man. Meanwhile, over in the next room, Deadpool's looking at the shoddy apartment and says that he really loves what's been done with this place. Do you need anything? Maybe a puppy? Matrix sighs, asking, Am I a disappointment? Deadpool pulls up a chair, telling him, Of course not! You've been wanting to murder the Sinister Six for 36 issues. Matrix then asks, What about Spider-Man? Did I disappoint him? And Deadpool yells, Ha! Who cares? This is all about you now. How are you feeling, buddy? Matrix takes a moment to think, and he says that he doesn't want to be the monster that ruins the future. Deadpool gets up and leaves, telling him, You can't define yourself in the negative. Sit there and think about what you want to be. And when you do, well, then we'll be ready to go for the next lesson. A short while later, Spider-Man and Deadpool, after getting a ping off of the tablet that Mockingbird gave them, head into the sewers of New Jersey. When the beeping starts to get louder, they find the Wrecking Crew. Spider-Man peeks around the corner, stating, Wait, 
Where's Thunderball? A second later, the two heroes are hit from behind by a giant wrecking ball, and Thunderball tells him, Right here! Once the two of them get back up, they run in to fight the crew, and Deadpool tells him, I don't want to be that guy, but shouldn't the guy with the wrecking ball be called the Wrecker? Wrecker shouts to Piledriver to get the portal open, and Deadpool kicks Piledriver from behind, stating, The portal isn't done recharging yet! Spider-Man then webs up Bulldozer, asking, How do you know? This is your fault, isn't it? Thunderball grabs his chain, stating, I have had enough of this, and he throws the wrecking ball, nearly missing Spider-Man. Spider-Man tells him, hey, you kind of missed. And Thunderball yells, it wasn't meant to hit you. Just then the walls of the sewer begin to crumble around them. And as the walls come down, there's a power blast that shoots over the two of them, destroying the debris. Through the smoke, Matrix steps out. Deadpool asks, what are you doing here? And Matrix tells him, I'm trying to be helpful. You asked me what I wanted to be. It is helpful. Matrix gets ready to attack, but Spider-Man tells him, wait, don't do that. And Matrix then charges up for another blast, but Wrecker shouts to Piledriver to just do it. Piledriver spins around, throws open another portal. And a few seconds later, a portal opens up in the middle of the jungle. Spider-Man, Deadpool, and Matrix all tumble out, with Spider-Man stating, oh, I really hate magic. Deadpool looks around, asking, where are we? Hawaii? And then Spider-Man sees something big, stating, yeah, definitely not Hawaii. We're in the Savage Land. With that, a T-Rex roars, and it charges straight towards everybody. Later, after a hasty retreat, Spider-Man and Matrix set up camp while Deadpool, well, Deadpool gets comfortable with his surroundings, equipping himself with nothing but a Speedo and a spear. Matrix asks where did Deadpool's clothes go, and Spider-Man says that if he had a dollar for every time that that question's been asked. Spider-Man gets up, webbing up the spear, telling him, okay, I gotta know, what was that device you sold to the Wrecking Crew? Deadpool thinks about it and says, well, I may have skimmed over the manual. It came from Asgard, and it's something that the Dark Elves or those ice zombies from the Game of Thrones, they used it to come to Midgard. S.H.I.E.L.D. confiscated it, and it's been sitting around, so I sold it. But enough about that. This is the vacation we've always wanted, Webs. Spider-Man rubs his head, telling Deadpool, just watch the perimeter while I figure this out, and put the freaking pants on. As the night winds down, Spider-Man takes off his mask, and he tells Matrix that there's something he's got to tell him. Matrix asks if it's about the kill switch that Mockingbird gave him. Spider-Man stares for a moment, and Matrix puts another log on the fire, stating, Yes, I downloaded all of her files before leaving. But Mockingbird is right, I am unstable. You and Deadpool should be safe. Spider-Man takes out the kill switch and looks at it, stating, We are safe. And he hands it to Matrix. Matrix looks at the switch, smiling, stating, You're exactly like your parents described you. Spider-Man then asks, What else do you remember? Matrix tells him that they were kind, and they did their best. What do you remember? Spider-Man thinks about it, and he tells him love. After a few moments of trying to understand, Matrix asks him, what is love? Spider-Man chuckles. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just your phrasing goes really close to a song lyric. Matrix looks at him again. What is love? And continuing with the song, Deadpool jumps out of the woods shouting, Baby, don't hurt me! Don't hurt me! No more! After plugging his phone into Matrix, Deadpool and Matrix start dancing, and Spider-Man begins to ask everyone if they remember those dinosaurs. Well, they're back, guys. Deadpool grabs his spear, throwing it, yelling, For Jeff Goldblum! The spear bounces off the T-Rex's chest, and he says, Doris. Everyone stops. And after a few moments, Deadpool asks, Is it me or that dinosaur just talk? Deadpool tells him, Nah, 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 I heard it too. And Spider-Man tells him, Okay, at least highly advanced dinosaurs are going to eat us. The T-Rex leans down, stating, I'm not going to kill any of you. After listening to your so-called banter, it's clear you're not aligned with the usurpers. Another dinosaur says, The ones who enslaved us wield a wrecking ball. One looks like the Juggernaut, and they all generally have an unpleasant fragrant. The T-Rex then leads the three of them to the cliffside, stating that there's a building down there where the others have been taken. They know not of what they're doing, but it is hurting their kind and damaging their ecosystem. It seems machines are used to sway their kind and force them into labor. This madness ends today! Matrix raises his hand, stating, Actually, I might have an idea as to why they are here. A projection of a map appears in all of the locations that were recently robbed. Matrix says that according to Mockingbird's reports, the Wrecking Crew have been hitting very specific locations. Based on where they've been before, it would appear that they're collecting parts to build a powerful drill. The last place where they went was a vault, but aside from money, inside it was a vibranium bee drill bit. Spider-Man tells him, that's it. There's tons of vibranium B under the Savage Land surface. That anti-metal would fetch a high price on the black market. Matrix's eyes begin to glow, stating, I'm glad that I could help, but I will be even more helpful destroying those who would subjugate these creatures and... Spider-Man stops him. Whoa, 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 whoa. How about you just stay back and watch? Deadpool yells, wait, we can't bench the kid. He had his trigger warning, so let's all just... Matrix stops both of them, stating, please do not fight. You are stronger when you work together. 
I will wait here, and if anything goes wrong, I will step in, under your guidance. Deadpool then says, just remember, I'm the one that's perfectly fine with him working out his rage feels through violence. I'm the cool dad. As everyone heads off, Matrix stands on the cliff alone, looking at the kill switch. He breaks it in half and then turns to follow the others. High in the sky, Deadpool rides a pterodactyl, stating, all right, let's do this! And he pulls out a large gun that clearly doesn't fit in any of his pouches. The heroes and the dinosaurs charge in onto the Wrecking Crew compound to try and free the enslaved dinosaurs, but just then a patch of vines lash out. The T-Rex yells to avoid the flora, but before he could finish, the vines have already grabbed onto everyone. While everyone struggles, Wrecker steps out, stating, All right, it's time for us to get digging. And as the giant gaping maw of a plant pulls Spider-Man and Deadpool in, Deadpool begins to shout, All right, little shop of horrors, little shop of horrors, sing it with me now. As the plant finishes eating them, Bulldozer says, See? Told you they'd be dead. Wrecker looks at the plant, stating, In my experience, these guys never die. All this did was buy us some time. Let's get out of here. Inside the plant, the vines begin to lower everyone towards a pit of acid so that the plant can digest them. Spider-Man begins to ask, what are they going to do now? So Deadpool snaps his arm out of its socket, stating, Ha ha, I got this. I just need to grab a grenade. Spider-Man headbutts Deadpool, telling him, You can't use that. Then we'd all be blown to bits. Deadpool tells him, yeah, probably, but my bits grow back. Just then, the plant is electrocuted, releasing its grip on everyone, causing them to fall closer to the pit of acid. At the last second, a portal opens up, grabbing everyone, throwing them back outside. Spider-Man asks, did we just go through an Asgardian portal? And Deadpool tells him, I'm not sure. This one looked a little different. Maybe it was the color? Spider-Man then asks, why would the Wrecking Crew be helping them? And the T-Rex says that perhaps one of his kind stole the portal from them. Deadpool turns around stating, whatever the case, we're free, so it's time to. But before Deadpool could start walking, he bumps into a porta potty. He runs in, slamming the door, shouting, finally, 38 issues and I can finally go. Just go on ahead without me. I'll catch up in a while. The T-Rex asks, do we? And Spider-Man tells him, yeah, Deadpool's no help to us anyway. As Deadpool sits down, he begins to laugh to himself that he really didn't have to go at all. He just wanted to read the next issue of the comic so he could see Webb's real name. And then there's a loud boom. The porta potty's walls fall down and Deadpool throws the comic stating, I walked into my reference, didn't I? As the T-Rex begins to lean down, it chomps onto Deadpool's upper half and it walks off. Up the path a little way, Spider-Man rides on the back of one of the T-Rexes when suddenly a portal opens up and he's punched in the face. More portals begin to open up, allowing the Wrecking Crew to attack without actually being there until finally Spider-Man is knocked out. Piledriver steps out of the portal with Thunderball stating, See? I knew that would be fun. Just then the sound of a T-Rex passing can be heard. Boom. 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 Pile Driver tells the T-Rex that this is perfect. Go on and eat those creeps. Another boom goes off, but instead of coming from the T-Rex's feet, it comes out of its stomach. The T-Rex opens up its mouth, letting the fire out, and Deadpool's upper torso shoots out, attacking Pile Driver, telling them, This is what you get for interrupting my reading time. Spider-Man and the dinosaurs slowly begin to get up, and they join into the fight. And as they push the wrecking crew back, Spider-Man tells them, Look, Deadpool's height finally matches his IQ. Deadpool tells him, you know, not your best work. At least being a dad finally justifies all your awful dad jokes. As the wrecking crew inches closer, there's a loud electrical boom knocking everyone back. And from the smoke, three people step out and the voice tells the wrecking crew to stand down and return what rightfully belongs to the Warriors 3. As the Asgardians join the fray, Spider-Man says, Thanks for the help, Hogan. Your name is Hogan, right? And Hogan tells him, Aye, that it is. Hildegard yells, I'm not prattling. Hildegard has drinking to return to. Now where's the ring of the hidden paths? Thunderball opens up a portal, throwing his ball through it, telling them, It's right here. After a quiet chant from Hildegard, the portal closes, snapping the chain on the wrecking ball, and Thunderball laughs, stating, Ah, uh, first round's on me? After punching Thunderball out and rounding up the rest, Fandrill mutters to himself, Elfish magic is the worst. And then a voice tells them, Actually, it's not magic. Matrix steps out of a portal, continuing, stating, It's technology from your world. With some salvaged parts, I was able to replicate it. Spider-Man then asks, Are you the one that did all of this? And Matrix tells him, I thought that if I could force you to work with Deadpool, you would stop fighting, but it would seem that I am wrong. I wanted to be helpful, but I have failed. Next time, I will not fail. I'm going to fix this once and for all. Matrix turns to go back into the portal, and Spider-Man yells for him to wait. Spider-Man sighs as the portal closes, and he picks up Deadpool's upper body. Deadpool tells him, I was checking out the last issue, and Matrix is right. We are stronger when we work together. Spider-Man tightens the webbing around his back to carry Deadpool, and he says, I really hate my life. After regrowing his body, Spider-Man and Deadpool head out to try and locate Matrix by following his path of, uh, clues. 
As Spider-Man and Deadpool look down into a warehouse with a stack of Aang bodies piling up, Spider-Man rubs his face and Deadpool says, well, it looks good to me. Spider-Man yells, no, this is your fault. We had one job and it was to make sure that Matrix doesn't go crazy. Mockingbird was right. Matrix has started to become more and more like you. Deadpool sulks for a moment and then he jumps down into the building stating, hurry up. Mockingbird left us a Quinjet. If Matrix is like me, then he's going to know where it is. Later, in Area 14, the neighborhood shield site filled with children guards, Spider-Man looks at the kids stating, you're, you're kidding, right? He begins to wave at the children stating, I'm just your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, so I'm cool with whatever neighborhood watch thing you got going on. The children start to yell, Freedom Bringer returns! And Deadpool says, that's right, the Freedom Bringer! We should probably get going now. The children then state that they're thankful for the new sentry bots that their friend has brought to keep them safe. As Deadpool pulls Spider-Man away, he then asks, what's going on? And Deadpool says, well, there's a vault and there's some tentacles and I thought that I met you here, but it was really the chameleon. Spider-Man stops him stating, you have 30 seconds to explain. Deadpool tells him, look, Matrix is fixing everything. All that stuff I screwed up, gone. This place is probably the biggest screw up. Below is a vault where a lot of things are stored and Matrix steps out from in front of the vault house stating, it's where the chameleon began working on freeing me. Mockingbird yells for everyone to take him down and as they run to the door, they all begin to bounce off of a force field. Matrix tells everyone, please, I mean you no harm. I only wish to speak with, but Mockingbird shouts, no, I am done talking. She pulls out a second kill switch. Spider-Man and Deadpool begin to scream for her to stop. She pushes the button, but nothing happens. Mockingbird looks at the switch asking what's going on and Matrix tells her that he made some adjustments after reading your files. Please understand this force field is to keep me in, not you out. There have been LMD sentries dispatched to each of the decommissioned shield warehouses to protect all of the weapons that you are housing, including myself. Spider-Man yells, he deserves to be free. And Matrix tells him, perhaps in time. But for now, I will be staying here at Area 14. I have caused a lot of problems, so to make amends, I have cleared myself of all problems that Deadpool has created for you. I won't harm anyone unless you try to harm the occupants of Area 14. And if I am to stray, Matrix holds out his arm, creating a second kill switch, stating, you can use this to shut me down once and for all. Do we have an understanding? Mockingbirds takes the switch, stating, no, I have better things to do right now. As she leaves, Matrix opens the door for Spider-Man and Deadpool. If you would, I would like to show you where I'm staying. Everyone heads inside, and as they go down into the vault, Matrix says that this shall become his new home. Deadpool tells him that he doesn't belong in a cage, but Matrix says, It isn't one. I am simply here to recharge and spend my time above with others. I choose to be here so that I may learn and grow. But what about Deadpool? Don't you belong in a cage for your sins? Spider-Man thinks about it for a moment and says, Honestly, I'm not sure. I can see him trying to do right, and if he keeps trying, well, that's good enough for me. Matrix then looks at Deadpool and tells him, This is your chance to tell Spider-Man how you really feel. Deadpool sighs, well, I'm sorry for letting you down, for being you, for everything. The two stand in silence, and after a few moments, Spider-Man holds out his arms. Deadpool gasps, and like a giddy little kid, he runs into Spider-Man's arms, hugging him. Matrix then says, there is something else. Now that we are all on the same page, it is time for us to work on your friendship. He opens the door, and both Spider-Man and Deadpool stare as Matrix tosses them a key. Later that day, Spider-Man and Deadpool go on a road trip in their new Spider-Pool buggy. In the middle of nowhere America, Spider-Man drives the Spidey Pool Mobile underneath the bridge and notices something. Deadpool's holding his hand. Spider-Man looks at him and asks, is there any reason for this? And Deadpool tells him, it helps me focus. See, I made a map of all the places that we should go and we're going to have so much fun seeing the sight, Spidey. But of course, it's never that simple. There's always going to be bad guys along the way. So why not just knock out a few of them while checking out the attractions? After taking out the last of the few baddies, Spider-Man says that he thought that it was supposed to be a vacation. Shouldn't they get out of the big cities? And Deadpool tells him, actually, I know the spot. Later that night at the Grand Tenton, maybe, who knows, but Spider-Man is sitting in the middle of the woods, staring at his campfire, stating that he hates to admit it, but this is nice. Deadpool begins to roast a marshmallow, stating that Master Matrix thought of everything. They have the perfect snacks, the matching tents, even the matching jammies. Spider-Man then asks him, what do you think that Matrix is doing now? And Deadpool says, probably learning some language or inventing one. He did get your dorky side. Meanwhile, back at the bunker, Matrix is having a dance party with all the kids watching over the X-Shield storehouse. Deadpool smiles to himself, stating, don't worry, Matrix. Webbs doesn't need to know about the last panel. Spider-Man pauses for a moment and asks, who are you talking to? And after a few moments of silence, Deadpool points, stating, well, the readers, the people reading the comics, Spidey. Spider-Man looks and says, all I see is a woman reading with her grandkids. 
So you think we're in some kind of a comic book, Deadpool? Deadpool tells him, No, I know we are. We're also in movies. The two go back to their marshmallows and Spider-Man asks, Why would anyone read a comic starring the both of us? And Deadpool says, Well, reasons. We have solo books too. Spider-Man asks, Do we sell well? And Deadpool tells him, If you consider best sellers selling well. Once the marshmallows are ready, Spider-Man lifts his mask to eat, stating, Look, there's no judgment here. I use my mask to hide my issues too. But talking to an imaginary reader is just a way to not deal with the real world. The next day, the two of them head out to their next campsite, but as the sun comes up, they begin to hear screaming from all of the campers. Spider-Man and Deadpool suit up to see where everyone is running to, and they find bugs. Lots and lots of bugs. The heroes quickly jump in the way to stop the bugs from chasing people, but as the swarm surrounds the two of them, Spider-Man says, I have an idea. He presses the button to the keys on the Spidey Pool Mobile, and a second later, the buggy comes speeding through, running over a group of bugs. They begin to skitter back into their hole, and Spider-Man jumps into the cave entrance, tossing a tracker on a bug, stating, this shall let us know what's going on. As the bugs begin to move underground, Spider-Man and Deadpool get into their buggy and they follow topside when suddenly they're stopped by a giant bug. Just before Deadpool could go on a bug killer rampage, the hero bug steps out from the top of the giant bug, stating, Thank goodness you're here! Spider-Man asks why would he attack these people, and the bug says, actually, I didn't. These things burrowed in from another world. They're being controlled by something or someone, and when they made it here, the connection was weakened. I just latched onto the big one, so I can help get the others to calm down. The bug turns around and begins to speak in their language, and suddenly the swarm turns around and begins to head back into the mountains, and Bug says they need to investigate. Spider-Man then asks where should they start, and Bug points to the large hole in the ground, stating that he's going to take a guess that they gotta go there. So our heroes begin to descend, while elsewhere reports of them coming down are being told to a shadowy figure, and the figure says to destroy them. As the three get deeper and deeper, the light becomes non-existent, and Deadpool asks Spider-Man, don't you have something on your belt to fix this? Spider-Man yells, oh yeah, let's see. As Spider-Man pushes the button, he lights up the tunnel. We see walls of bugs, with Deadpool telling him, yeah, I changed my mind, I don't wanna see that ever again. Spider-Man tells Bug to try and do the thing that he did before, and as Bug steps out and speaks in his bug language, the bugs ignore him and they begin to attack. As the bugs swipe at Spider-Man, he shouts to Bug that they could use some help, and Deadpool tells him, yeah, I'll get on that when we can. We're a little busy having my foot cut off right now. Bug gets up to fight, stating, whatever the spongy stuff lining on these cavern walls, and Deadpool tells him, it's poop! We're all just walking around and feeling poop. Bug clears his throat telling him, oh, whatever it is, it's radiating some kind of energy and preventing me from talking to the bugs. As the bugs begin to overpower the three of them, Spider-Man asks, hey, if we're in a comic book, can't you just jump forward a few pages and figure out what we gotta do? And Deadpool looks at him and goes, who do I look like, Gwenpool? Wait, am I Gwenpool? A thought bubble of Gwenpool pops up. She tells him, nah, only in your fanfic. And Deadpool asks, mom? And Gwenpool tells him, you know what? Way too gross for me. I'm out of your book. Good talk. The bugs begin to pin Deadpool down and he yells, That's it! No more Mr. Nice Deadpool! Time for some age-appropriate violence! He takes out his guns and he begins to rip the swarms to shreds, stating, Look at that! All of my Starship Troopers role-playing has finally paid off! As Deadpool continues to shoot, Spider-Man stops him yelling, Hey! Hey! They're already dead! Bug looks at the wall, stating that they're right. The substance on the wall is bug poop. We're acting like some kind of conductor. My guess is that. But before he could finish, the three are shocked with a bolt of lightning and a group of voices can be heard. One of the three leader bugs tells the others that they're gonna go round up the others and make sure that these despicable heathens are killed. As one of the leaders walks off, the two remaining get ready to kill everyone, but they stop. One says that he's not sure about this, Dennis. He signed up to expand their universe, not murder. And Dennis looks at Kiko, stating, you know, if you want to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. Kiko then goes on, stating that it's supposed to be about freedom. Who are we to take another life? But while the two go back and forth, Spider-Man whispers to Deadpool to hit his belt. And Deadpool whispers back, oh, I thought you'd never ask. As the light blinds Kiko and Dennis, Deadpool jumps up kicking Dennis with his recently grown baby foot shouting, Ow! That hurts more than it should. Spider-Man gets up to his feet, webbing the two of them up asking, Who's your boss? Kiko says that he was shown a lot of things today, but one thing is that he isn't a rat. As Bug gets back up, he says that the pulse was curious, but it wasn't electrical. The lining on these walls needs to be tested. But while Bug goes back to the surface, Spider-Man and Deadpool go deeper into the caverns, with Spider-Man stating that he's been thinking a lot about what's been going on. Him talking to the imaginary people got him thinking. How about he talks to him instead? 
Deadpool tells him. Yeah, that, that'd be nice. But who am I really talking to when my best bud is always Spider-Man? Spider-Man tells him, fine, how about this? And he pulls off the mask. Deadpool shouts, oh my God, you're... Spider-Man asks, what, you knew? And Deadpool yells, no, I can't see your face, it's blank. There's only one group of people who could stop this, and that's MarvelComics.com. Spider-Man says, okay, okay, how about this? My name is Beep Beep. Deadpool jumps up and down shouting, that's not working either. All I hear is a bleeping sound. This is borderline cruel, Marvel. As Spider-Man puts his mask back on, a blue light shines and Deadpool runs towards it, stating, oh, I love shiny things, let's go. As Spider-Man catches up, he sees Deadpool standing next to a blue portal. And Deadpool yells, Looks like we're about to do a Stargate crossover. As Spider-Man examines the portal, the third bug leader says that they wanted to meet the boss, right? Well, he's waiting for them on the other side of the negative zone. As the leader blasts the ground, the two are flung into the portal. After falling outside of time and reality, Spider-Man and Deadpool landed in a barren world. The two begin to walk and Deadpool tells him, Look on the bright side, Spidey. At least we don't have to deal with the bugs anymore, right? Looks like our road trip continues. As the two pass the next sand mound, though, Spider-Man folds his arms, asking, You were saying? As Deadpool looks down, he says, Son of explicitive word! Down below, the Eternal Ransack beats down on some of the natives. Deadpool says, I love the Eternals. Maybe when they're done with their vacation, we could team up, Spidey. Ransack grabs Deadpool, throwing him through a building. Spider-Man then begins to help some of the natives, and he asks, You wouldn't happen to be losing some livestock to things that are bug-like in nature, would you? And one of the natives asks, Bugs? Our livestock have carapaces like all milk bearers. Deadpool jumps down. Gross. I'm a little rusty on the continuity thing, but aren't the Eternals good guys? After reading the editor note, which explained that Ransack is a good guy, Deadpool then says, That's what I thought! The editors always have it right! So what gives? Spider-Man tries to web Ransack up, but before the webbing could set, he grabs the two of them, throwing them into a building. Spider-Man pulls Deadpool out of the building, dropping him down, and he asks, So what's going on with Ransack? Just then, two women appear in strange clothes, and the first says that her name is Janor, and this is Coley. Coley looks at the two of them and says, Sup, nerds? Spider-Man begins to introduce himself, and Janor tells him, We know who you are. We have to stop Ransack so we can deal with the Galex that you call bugs. Ransack is the one responsible for the hole between all of these worlds. Help us, and you two can go home finally. If not, you can go to jail. Spider-Man looks at Deadpool, and he tells him, Only with you would a road trip end in prison. And Deadpool asks, <laughs> Don't all road trips end that way? Spider-Man and Deadpool jump onto Janor's flyer, and Coley says that they've had a close eye on Ransack ever since he came to the Negative Zone. He was peaceful up until he punched a hole in the universe. He hasn't just gone mad. Something isn't right here. Deadpool looks at the hologram description, stating, Yeah, it says Ransack's eyes are blue, and right now they're pretty red. Spider-Man then asks, Maybe he's possessed? And Deadpool jumps up, telling him, That works for me! Maximum effort! Chimichangas! After Deadpool shoots Ransack, Spider-Man tries a different approach, trying to reason with Ransack, which Ransack answers with a punch to the face. The four of them try to bring Ransack down, and as Janor hits him with her electric staff, Ransack's possession fades. He stands up, asking, What have I done? Spider-Man asks, Are you okay? Ransack tells him, No! Get him out of my head! It's returning! Spider-Man runs over to try and help, but before Ransack converts back, he hands Spider-Man a small device, stating that this is his failsafe. Take it. It's the only thing that can stomp him. It's the only way they can stomp him. Spider-Man asks him who, and Deadpool tells him, It's actually, actually, don't you mean whom? Just then there's an explosion knocking the two of them back, and a voice tells them, Nothing stops Blastar! But as everyone gets ready to fight against Blastar, Deadpool takes his time to look at the device that Ransack gave them. He looks at the small box, pushing the button, stating, I don't get it. I pressed it and nothing happens. Spider-Man tells him, really? You want to look at that now? And Deadpool says, all right, Blastar. Ransack throws Spider-Man into Deadpool to knock him away, and Blastar grabs both Janor and Coley, slamming them into the ground. Deadpool then gets ready to help the two of them, but as he runs, Ransack grabs him by the leg, breaking Deadpool's back over his knee. Spider-Man tries to web Ransack up, but Ransack grabs the strand, flinging them both to the ground. Blastar then shouts, ENOUGH! And he shocks everyone with electricity. As everyone falls to the ground, Blastar tells Ransack that he did good. Now all we need to do is finish everyone off and stabilize the portal. Then we'll be able to rule both universes. Ransack begins to groan and Blastar asks, 
What is it? You're killing the moment here, man. Oh. He looks back, but before he can say anything, Carcass tackles him to the ground, telling him, Thanks for ruining my retirement. Now where is... Ransack charges at him, and Carcass asks, What's going on? We're friends! Spider-Man quickly webs up Ransack while he's focused on Carcass, and Deadpool says, That was clutch! Just like in your video games! But I'll admit, I haven't really played the story. Just started swinging around and changing outfits on you, Spidey. Carcass walks up to Ransack and asks, What happened? Listen to my voice. You're not a monster. You're good. Ransack tries to break free, but after a few moments, Blastar's possession wears off and Ransack says that he's so sorry. He was living peacefully here when he noticed someone was following him. Blastar took control of his mind, and before he knew it, he opened up a portal for the bugs that went through it. The horrible thing about it is that he liked it. Blastar showed him who he really was. Carcass tells him, no. Blastar filled your head with lies. You're not the rage inside. You've always been more than that. You need to find the weapon that Blastar used on you so that you can... And Blastar asks... You talking about this weapon? He shoots both Deadpool and Coley with the same energy weapon that he used to take control of Ransack. Blastar tells him, All right, my pets, tear them to pieces! Deadpool runs at Spider-Man, punching him, telling him, It's time to die, webs! And there's another flash of green with Blastar telling the natives, Come one, come all. Nothing will stand in the path of Blastar. For now, let the invasion of Earth begin. Deadpool chases down Spider-Man, telling him, there's no getting away and you know this! Look, we both had a good run, but we knew that this comic was going to end with me killing you! Spider-Man looks over at the natives gathering and he says, That is a giant army. It might be time to... But Deadpool then slams his head into the wall, telling him, It's about time I started acting like my old self! No more PG-13 Deadpool! Time to get some hard R! He slices through Spider-Man's webs, telling him, There's too much pool in these pages! Not enough dead! Back on the ground, Ransack throws Carcass into Janor, and Janor quickly gets back up, stating that she will stop this. She opens up her shirt, revealing a plasma cannon. Carcass asks, you're a robot? And Janor tells him, I prefer Cyborg. The cannon goes off stunning Ransack and Coley, but Carcass spots Spider-Man falling off in the distance. Carcass grabs Janor, stating that he apologizes for this, but Spider-Man's in peril. Before Janor could finish asking what is he doing, Carcass throws her across the field to catch Spider-Man and stop his fall. Spider-Man slowly starts to get back up, but Carcass tells him that he must hurry and find Blastor's mind control device. Just then, there's an explosion with Deadpool stating, Please do not ask me where I hid this rocket launcher. Just know that it was worth it. He continues to fire the rocket, so Spider-Man jumps up, webbing a katana, asking, How about we level the playing field a bit, Deadpool? Deadpool takes out another katana, clashing with Spider-Man, shouting, Finally! We're crossing swords! Pun slightly intended. He leaps into the air, slashing at Spider-Man, cutting through his suit's chest and mask. But Deadpool then asks, Why are you smiling at any there? And Spider-Man tells him, nah, nah, it's just, well, this. He webs up the electrical panel behind Deadpool, bringing it down, crushing him. Deadpool starts to move with Spider-Man asking, did I just kill you? And Deadpool tells him, nah, I'm back now, but how? Spider-Man helps him up, telling him, it must be the electricity. It seems to jolt Blastar's mind control. And Deadpool says, I vaguely remember that from the last issue. The two jump onto Janor's flyer when Bug radios in, stating that he just finished working on his device. It can control the bugs that crossed over, but the portal is radiating. What is happening on their side? Spider-Man says that it's Blastar. He has an army and is leading them to the portal. If any of them get through, they need to blow up the portal. So Deadpool asks, what about a road trip? Spider-Man tells him, it's over. The portal is right over there. Now's our chance to... But before the two could cross over, there's an explosion, sending them back to the ground. And Blaster now has everyone under his control, telling them all that they'll be next. Soon, you will bear witness to the end of the world. But while Blastar is monologuing, Spider-Man whispers something into the comms. Blastar shouts, asking, What is that now? There's always someone to ruin my monologuing moment. Ransack begins to grunt and point off in a direction. And when Blastar looks at the time, he says, Oh, crap! Through the portal, the bugs begin to pour out, with Deadpool singing, It's raining bugs! Hallelujah! It's raining bugs! Blastar opens fire on the bugs, but while he's distracted, Spider-Man webs up the mind control device, throwing himself over to Deadpool. Deadpool then catches him, and Spider-Man yells, I meant for you to catch the mind control thingy, Deadpool. So Deadpool tells him, A thank you would have been nice, you know. Also, is that some new deodorant? Spider-Man frantically begins to push the buttons on the mind control device until a shockwave goes out, freeing everyone. Janor then walks forward, stating that she's been waiting for this for a while. Blastar, you're under arrest. 
With Blastar safely under control, Janar then asks Spider-Man and Deadpool. Maybe they'd like to become members of the Negative Force. Spider-Man begins to say, actually, we have business back in our... But Janar lets out a sigh, stating, thank goodness, I was just being polite. Deadpool then asks, what are we supposed to do now? The portal's closed. The cannon on Janor's stomach begins to spin and a beam of light shoots out and a portal opens up. Deadpool says, wait, 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 wait. You could have done this the whole time. Spider-Man pushes Deadpool through to the other side. But as they get through, everything has changed. Spider-Man hops in the buggy and he calls Bug, but after a few moments, Bug doesn't answer. Deadpool pops open a compartment stating, well, thankfully, Matrix put a teleporter on this thing. Time to go back to New York. The two of them reappear in New York and they begin to look around. With Spider-Man getting up asking what happened. Deadpool looks at the destroyed building and says, Well, looks like our comic got cancelled. There's one constant across all of time and space. All things end at one point or another. And the Earth, the Earth is no different. A war came, and it took down some of the Earth's mightiest heroes. And all that remained were the unlikely duo, Spider-Man and Deadpool. After spending some time in the negative zone, Webbs and Deadpool came back to a destroyed New York. For once, it wasn't Deadpool's fault. Spider-Man picks up a newspaper looking at the date stating that a whole year went by from when they first left. What could have happened in such a short amount of time? But then Deadpool begins to feel something, or rather, he can't feel something. The readers, they're, they're gone! He should be able to read the captions on the pages to see what's happening, but even they're gone. Where are the asterisks, the captions? Where are the editors, Webs? Could it be the fourth wall is back? It's over, they're gone. Spider-Man asks, what is he even talking about? The readers look around, everyone is gone, everyone. Deadpool begins cradling himself, stating, this is it, the fourth wall is back, I can't break it. If our readers are gone, what does that mean? Spider-Man shakes Deadpool, telling him, just stop already, we need answers. Come on! Deadpool hops in the back of the buggy, stating that there's got to be a simple explanation for all of this. Maybe Master Matrix went crazy and killed the planet. All we need to do is scan for Matrix, and... But just as the buggy finishes scanning, it tells the two of them that there are no signs of Master Matrix on this planet. Records indicate that he went offline 42 days ago. But before the two of them could even guess what happened to Master Matrix, their robotic son that was sealed up in a shield facility, several rockets shoot up ahead and explode right in front of the buggy. The voice calls out for them to drop their weapons, and Deadpool shouts, Make me, you smoke monsters from Lost! But as the voices get closer, one asks if that is Peter. Through the smoke, Silk, now fitted with a bionic arm, and Deborah walk through. With Silk running over to hug Spider-Man, stating that she thought he was dead. Deadpool says, Wait a minute, did you just call him Peter? Silk tells him that they don't have time for that right now. Sorry about shooting, but he'll be back soon. Deadpool mutters to himself, though. Yep, Peter. I've heard that before. Uh, has anyone else hear that rumbling? Just then a giant mole man bursts through the ground, grabbing Deadpool and releasing dozens of moloids from his mouth, which all scream, food, food, food. Deadpool opens fire on the moloids, asking, what happened to Mole Man? And Deborah tells him that it was the nukes. Spider-Man then asks, what nukes? So Silk explains that Mole Man was near the detonations downtown. He survived, but well, he and the moloids mutated. Spider-Man asks, who set off the nukes? And Silk says that they did. They tried everything to stop him, but nothing worked. Deadpool asks, him? And Deborah tells him that he has no name. Most call him the Manipulator. Deadpool scratches his head, stating, it sounds like a big over-the-top kind of a name. Did an event take place while we were gone? As the Mole Man slashes at Silk, Deadpool cuts off his hand, stating that he's going to have to take a guess here. There's some kind of alien evasion, or a bunch of scrolls came in impersonating people. Silk says, well, the scrolls were here, but they were fighting alongside us against the aliens that did invade. Many heroes died. Countless numbers. As Deadpool hacks his way through the Moloids, Silk starts webbing up Mole Man, and Spider-Man latches onto the top, pulling back, asking what about the civilians? Spider-Man and Silk pull on a web, slamming Mole Man down on top of his Moloids, and Silk says that the survivors of the invasion were taken to harvesting camps. Deadpool then says, yeah, invasions, heroes dying, all the hallmarks of a major event. Most important question though is, why did Silk call Spider-Man Peter? Spider-Man looks at Deadpool and takes off his mask, stating, I'm Peter Parker. So Deadpool then says, why are you telling me now? Wait, no, 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 no. The writers haven't let me know your identity this entire series. So that means something bad is about to happen. 
Silk then says that they need to hurry up and get out of there. There's an abandoned shield facility that they use close by. Silk leads the two down a secret subway, and as she opens up the door, Spider-Man and Deadpool see Puck, a mutated Wolverine, and Crystar. Silk then turns back and says that she would like to welcome them to the underground. She goes on to explain that before, when the manipulator appeared, anyone and everyone fought. They had the numbers, the focus, the unity. They had him on the ropes. That's why they called him the manipulator. Just when he seemed down, he turned it against them. He parted the earth and many people fell into a pit of lava. Those that managed to live were taken away by the harvest. He would open up a portal and bring people to harvesting zones, which is why there is a slight possibility that all of those people are alive, which is why today they're going to let the manipulator harvest them. Deadpool says, wait a moment. Deadpool then says, wait a moment. There's still nothing. No asterisks, no captions explaining everything. This has to be connected. Spider-Man sighs, stating that they're going to have to ignore him. There's got to be a better way to fight this manipulator guy than getting themselves captured. Puck says that they're open to ideas, and Wolverine tells him that he's really tired of hiding. It's time to put up or shut up. Spider-Man then looks at Crystar, asking if he's in, and he says, as well as the spirit of vengeance. Deadpool stops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Crystar? Crystar is the spirit of vengeance. What's a Z-lister doing in a big event story, much less surviving this far? Spider-Man then asks if there's anything that they have to go on, and Silk says that she got a message from her mom. There was a distress call put out, and it read, Cindy, if you can read this, we love you. Stay safe. Stay away. Destroy the manit. Spider-Man then says, I'm really not loving that stay away part. What are we waiting for? Deadpool then shouts, we have to think for a second. This is all wrong. The fourth wall is gone. I can't talk to the readers anymore. I can't hear them. There's no editorial notes. Z-lister showing up in what is clearly a huge event. All of this has to be connected, Webs. I know I've joked about it before, but this comic has been canceled. Spider-Man groans asking, why are you always you? So Deadpool says, it's still up in the air if our solo series is still going. If we die in these pages, we're gone for good. So how about we stay in this bunker where it's nice and safe? It did wonders for Silk and look at that giant middle finger. Clearly not censored now. Spider-Man pushes Deadpool off stating that he may think that this is a comic, but it's very real. He needs him to take this seriously for once. If there are people out there, they need help. It's what heroes do. So what do you say? Deadpool looks away blushing stating, you had me and I need you. Now let's go get ourselves killed. As everyone hurries outside to confront the manipulator, Deadpool looks up at the giant cosmic being stating, I thought the manipulator would be a bit taller. Wolverine tells Puck, this is the guy, fastball special. So Puck says, I'm on it. And he hulks out. Spider-Man looks at the two of them asking, when did that happen? I can't tell whether to make a Canadian joke or a hockey joke. Puck hurls Wolverine towards the manipulator's face, but the manipulator just claps his hands together, squishing Wolverine then begins breathing on him. He then turns his fire breath onto the others, and Deadpool shouts, Didn't Wolverine just come back? And Spider-Man swings away, stating, Less existential crisis, more escaping. The fire pours down to the Crystar, but as he's reduced to a pile of broken crystals, he starts to reform himself, shouting, Vengeance is mine! The giant Crystar grabs Manipulator by the throat, but the Manipulator punches a hole through Crystar, causing him to shatter. Puck then jumps up, beating on the Manipulator's helmet, shouting, Puck smash! And the Manipulator ignites him, throwing him to the ground. Silk screams for Puck and then jumps up, transforming her bionic arm into a giant sword. She then swings, cutting off one of the manipulator's arms, and everyone gets to work attacking. As the manipulator falls back, Spider-Man asks if he's dead. But before anyone can answer, the manipulator lifts his hand to attack, and Deadpool charges in, pushing Spider-Man out of the way. The blast goes off, incinerating Deadpool, leaving him as nothing more than a pile of ash. The manipulator gets back up, regrowing his arm, stating, That is enough. It is time to harvest Earth's last heroes. Later, in the harvesting zones, Spider-Man wakes up hearing a voice tell him that they didn't stand a chance. They were united until broken. They were in prison and made to fight each other. Every time it was the same thing. They fought, they failed, they died. Then they were brought back here. Spider-Man says, stop, just stop. You talk too much like Otto. United until broken? Who even talks like that? Blah, 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 blah. Just shut up so I can have a look around and see how things are going. But then he stops and thinks about it for a moment. Wait, did you just say that we died and came back? So maybe, just maybe, Deadpool's still alive. Elsewhere, between the panels, Deadpool is wandering around aimlessly asking if anyone's there. Is this heaven? Or is this the end of the last Harry Potter movie? Because I would take either, honestly. And just then a voice tells him to keep it down. Some people are trying to work here. 
Across the way, Gwenpool is sitting at her desk drawing. And Deadpool asks, where are we? And Gwenpool tells him, gutter space, the place beyond panels. So if you could be a little less stupid and realize that right now all of Marvel Comics seem to be ending, Deadpool then tells her, if we're in the gutter space, then this place is a fourth wall breaker. So break some walls already. Gwenpool tells him, that's the thing, I can't. I was here when the fighting started. At first, the manipulator nabbed me for harvesting, but the next thing I knew, I was out and back in the world. Things started to go south, so I escaped here. It's the only place safe there is, and it's not working like it used to. Normally, I'd be able to move between the pages and the panels, but most importantly, see beyond the fourth wall. Right now, all the other panels in comics are gone, and the fourth wall is very much back. So I started thinking. Maybe if I drew everyone, I could bring them back. They would be safe long enough for us to figure out what to do. Except the only problem is, you showed up, alone. Could it be because you're also a wall breaker? Who knows? The only other thing that I was able to draw up is a giant pile of guns. Deadpool runs over arming himself, telling her, Haha, this could work. If you could draw me here, could you draw me back? Back in the harvesting zone, Spider-Man patiently waits when suddenly one of the guard bots is shot in the head. He looks over at the shadowy figure and saying hello to the strangely shaped thing. Deadpool steps out asking, Thought a little melting would kill me? Spider-Man asks, how did you? But Deadpool stops him telling him, We gotta get out of here, like right now! It's a long story. Actually, no it's not, but we gotta get everyone else free. As the two start freeing everyone, Deadpool says, Look, I was right. The fourth wall, the manipulator, it's all connected. We have to find the fourth wall and break it. It's the key to beating the manipulator. Spider-Man then says, Fine, so I do believe it. How do we find it and how do we break it? First, we gotta get up and do the same thing as always. Maximum effort! As Deadpool and Spider-Man take down more of the guard bots, the manipulator appears asking who dares. Deadpool tosses Spider-Man a rocket launcher, telling him, Don't think, just shoot! So Spider-Man pulls the trigger, firing an RPG at the manipulator. As it explodes, the manipulator stands back up asking, Do you really think you can defy me? Spider-Man tells him, Well, uh, that's a solid maybe. And Deadpool also chimes in with, Solid maybe! But we do have a plan! And the manipulator asks, what is their foolish plan? So Deadpool tells him, the plan is simple. Tear down that fourth wall with the help of everyone. With the newly freed heroes, everyone gets to work taking the manipulator down. While with Reed Richards, Deadpool says he's got a bit of a theory. So picture this. We all exist inside of a comic book universe, not the real world. None of you know that there's a fourth wall separating us and the readers. But for me to break that fourth wall all the time, it's kind of my thing. So the manipulator restored the fourth wall, cutting us off from our audience and giving himself power over us. Reed listens and then says, okay, maybe not all theories are good ones. Deadpool then shouts asking, why does no one believe me? Papa slash Gwenpool, can you hear me? Gwenpool tells him, yeah, I can hear you, but I just can't find the fourth wall. Maybe it never existed. Maybe we never existed. We haven't been able to see it since the manipulator showed up. Wait, wait a second, that's it. Must draw faster. With this, I might be able to find the other comics. Just then, out in the battlefield, something slams into the ground, and Deadpool looks at it asking, What's that? Mom always did tell me to stick my hand in whatever mysterious black hole. So he pulls his arm out of the hole, wearing the Infinity Gauntlet, asking, Does this make me look retconned yet? He opens up his fist and sees a note, and after reading it, he says, Well, damn, that's just stupid enough to work. Now we just need a few more heroes, like Cap, Jean Grey, Thor, and maybe even Mean Joe Green over there. So, right, first things first, the fourth wall is the problem. Second, the fourth wall used to not be in existence. Third, the fourth wall reappeared at the same time as the manipulator. Ergo, the manipulator is the fourth wall. Everyone stares for a moment. And Spider-Man then says, I think what he's trying to say is we all need to strike as one, with the most powerful weapons and entities that we have. Cap then says that they've already done coordinated attacks. What makes this one different? And Deadpool tells him, because now you have us. So Cap thinks about it and shrugs. All right, what's the worst that could happen? Everyone gets into place, pinning the manipulator to the ground, and with some of the strongest heroes, Deadpool spearheads right into the manipulator's chest and out of a portal. Spider-Man looks around asking, where are they? And Reed says that according to these readings, wherever they are, it doesn't exist. Deadpool tells them, yeah, that's right, we ain't in Kansas anymore. We smashed through the manipulator's chest and beyond to the fourth wall. Welcome everyone to the real world. Spider-Man stops him, wait, what do you mean the real world? We were just in the real world. Deadpool grabs Spider-Man and hugs him. Can't you feel it? The fourth wall is gone. Captain says, hold on, I'm gonna need some answers here. The plan worked, we broke through whatever was there. Is the manipulator gone? How do we go back? What in creation is that? Deadpool looks up at a billboard advertising Avengers Endgame. 
And it says that it seems that they've changed the Avengers catchphrase after he got booted. All that matters now is that he can see the readers again. Man, I should have missed all your smiling faces, especially you, Raiders mom. Spider-Man yells, this is serious. And Deadpool says, I know. Gwenpool, can you hear slash see me? So Gwenpool tells him, yeah, I can see you. I'm just covered in comics right now. Deadpool pats Spider-Man, see, covered in comics. Everything is gonna be okay. Spider-Man then asks, oh yeah, tell that guy over there. Manipulator stomps down shouting, you cannot escape the manipulator. Deadpool then asks, how could he follow us beyond the fourth wall? He is the fourth wall. Gwenpool calls out that now that they have these comics, they can check out how the other heroes hurt Manipulator in the event. Check it out. Gwenpool shows an issue of Next Force, and we see Silver Surfer attacking his armpit. So Deadpool tells everyone, that's it, aim for the armpit. Everyone focuses their attacks, but the Manipulator just swats everyone away. So Gwenpool then says, okay, how about this one? Deadpool looks at the cover of Silk and the Murder Sharks and says, you know what? We're just gonna pull all these heroes out. All these guys look like phasers. So maybe we just need to do their phasing thing, which does work if even for a moment. So Gwenpool asks, really? Um, how about some aliens? You guys can use them, right? That also doesn't work, so she moves on to the next comic. The Envy Fantastic Four, starring Hulk Puck, Literal Wolverine, Bionic Silk, and Ghost Rider Crystar. Spider-Man then asks, weren't those guys dead? And Deadpool tells him, come on, nothing is real anymore. We'll take these nerds too. Everyone starts fighting again, but Deadpool then says, wait, you're right, none of this is real. So Gwenpool flips through another comic stating as much as she hates to admit it, he's right. Check this out. This comic has Space Knight Venom. That comic was canceled years ago and Flash Thompson is dead right now. So with everything not being in continuity, nothing is real or fake depending on your perspective, which means nothing can beat the manipulator. Spider-Man yells, we have to try. So Deadpool stops him telling him, no, that's the thing. We're not real anymore. Gwenpool, tee it up. Gwenpool starts showing different comics and Deadpool then asks, What's the one thing between all of these that are the same? Spider-Man takes a close look and says, Thompson? And Deadpool says, that's right, the writer, Robbie Thompson. There's no way that Marvel would hand over a huge event to a D-lister like that, bro. Spider-Man then asks, can you say it like maybe we both understand it? So Deadpool says, sure. That means that we've been in the writer's head this whole time. It means that none of this really happened. As the heroes vanish, Spider-Man then asks, can we bring them all back? And the manipulator gets ready to attack, shouting, Time for things to come to an end. And Deadpool tells him, yep, starting with him. Just then, the manipulator shrinks down, and Hollywood turns into the writer Robbie Thompson's office. Robbie jumps up from his chair wearing a bucket with eyes cut out, asking, Are you guys gonna kill me? And Deadpool asks, Haven't you stole enough from Jerry Dugan? Spill it. Why'd you do all of this? Robbie sits back down and says, I just wanted you to know each other's identities, to help the two of you grow. A giant event is the only way editorial would approve of you knowing each other. Deadpool tells him, that's sweet. But you know what else big events are good for other than sales? Canceling books. Robbie asks, am I out of a job? And Deadpool asks, can you really blame us? Have you been reading these books? Spider-Man pulls a comic of himself from the shelf asking, wait, why does this show me getting married? Deadpool snatches it, telling him, ah, it's, it's just some fanfic. And Robbie yells, no, he really did get married. So Deadpool punches Robbie, shouting, you've caused enough pain already. Just turn the damn page. On the cover of this comic, Robbie yells that he isn't the villain here. He's just the writer. And Deadpool asks, what's the difference? On the next page, Spider-Man and Deadpool bring Robbie to jail, getting high fives from Master Matrix. But before they go to his cell, Spider-Man takes off the helmet, stating that he won't need this. So maybe I won. Deadpool really does know Spider-Man's identity now. Spider-Man and Deadpool stare at each other and they burst out laughing. As Deadpool slams the cell door shut and he says, you wish. <laughs> Robbie yells for them to wait. The door closes and Spider-Man tells Deadpool that he's really proud of him. Instead of killing a villain, he put him behind bars. They saved the world, brought back all the fallen heroes and all before lunch. What's next for them? And Deadpool says, well, uh, we line, whatever comes next. I'm just glad that we're finally on the same page. Spider-Man puts his hand on Deadpool's shoulder, telling him, same Wade. Same. And there you have it, the conclusion to the Spider-Man Deadpool arc. This was the second major one that they had in the storyline, the first one being their love child, Itsy Bitsy. What did you guys think about it? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Personally, I really did enjoy it, and I'd love to see them bring this book back. I don't know why they stopped producing a Spider-Man Deadpool team-up book, but they did. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe to get a full story every Monday, and then watch all the individual parts as the week goes on. And I'll see you next time right here. Thank you